Hello everybody and welcome back to another Ethan Journal video. So today's video is a different type of video I guess you could say. It's not a tutorial, it's more on the side of a review and my first impressions of an app that I found. Now it's not really an app, it's more of a toolkit as you will soon see. But today we're going to be checking out Orca Toolkit from Mac Stadium. Let's head over to the web browser so I can kind of show you what I'm talking about. So this is Mac Stadium. Um, they provide um, cloud-based Macs. So like if you need a Mac uh, or something running Mac OS for some server application or app and you don't you don't want to buy a Mac but you still want to have that, they can give you basically a virtualized Mac mini in the cloud, kind of like what you would get with a Linux server through Linode or AWS. Um, I've loved their stuff. I love their team. They do some amazing things. And I didn't realize this, but apparently they have something called Orca Toolkit. Um, if I can find it, I forgot where I grabbed it from. Um, maybe I have to search for it. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, they have this thing called Orca Toolkit, which basically allows you to take your own Mac device, virtualize Mac OS on that in an entirely contained environment. So kind of like VirtualBox, but it's completely plug and play. It downloads a legitimate copy of Mac OS from Apple, installs the whole thing for you inside of a virtual machine. So I've already gone ahead and downloaded it. And if I go ahead and I open up Orca Toolkit um, and I pull it over, it's really simple. Um, the first screen you get like system information and stuff. Um, you can edit how you want to configure your devices. I always, I kind of experimented with what I think would work. I have an M1 Mac mini with an M1 processor, which has eight cores and 16 gigabytes of RAM. So with that in mind, I went ahead and gave it half of my CPU and eight gigabytes of memory. So half of both of those, as well as 50 gigabytes of storage. Doing this, I went ahead and I installed the first virtual machine. And it was really quick and simple. If I go in to create a new one here, um, and I'm just gonna name this Demo Mac, um, and I go in and let's go download the latest. That's basically going to go ahead and download the latest copy of Mac OS Ventura and install that on this Mac mini, uh, virtualized Mac mini in this case, set that up. You choose your screen resolution where you want it to be stored and click install. I've already done that for us. So I'm going to close out of that, but I will go ahead and start up this version right here. So doing this, you'll notice it'll take a second to open up the window. Um, and I forget where it's going to open itself up in. Oh, it did a full screen window. One second. I got to pull it up over here. Um, here we go. So here is what it renders. It's literally just a regular window box here. Um, and just like you would have a normal Mac. As you can see, I've already made an account. Um, and if I log in, boom, it will literally be a virtualized Mac mini here. Um, if I go into about this Mac, like I would normally on a regular Mac, it actually says Apple Virtual Machine 1. Um, and then it says Apple M1 Virtual, 8 gigabytes. Uh, it, it comes up with a serial number um, that is completely different than my regular Mac Mini serial number. I don't know how it does that, but it's pretty neat. And of course it's running um, Mac OS Ventura. So it's basically a clean install of Mac OS Ventura. Everything works as it normally would. Um, so I can go ahead and let's say I want to download Firefox. I can head over to firefox.com and it'll bring me over to Mozilla like I normally would. I can download that. It has full access to the internet through the computer you're virtualizing it with. Um, I was experimenting a little bit with trying to get it to run some edition of um, like a web server to try and see if I could virtualize this in some way and make it like a cloud server on my Mac mini. Um, I might even try and get this thing to become a crypto mining machine and then I can have like four virtualized Mac minis all cr mining crypto at the same time. I think that'd be kind of a cool idea. Either way, it's just a really neat system and the fact that it's free is also really neat too. Um, now if I actually go back to Mac Stadium, um, and we look at something like this, and of course they have um, they have their pricing for what their virtualized Mac stuff is. Um, you can get a Mac Mini 2018 for eighty nine dollars a month, so that's still on Intel. Um, but if you go with the same one I have right here, it's ninety nine dollars a month. Now I bought this computer once at twelve hundred dollars with the education discount back in twenty twenty when it came out. So if we do the math on that. Um, we go $1,200 divided by, let's see, they're doing $99 a month. 
basically in about a year worth of virtualizing a server on my Mac Mini, I would have paid off this Mac Mini rather than using it in the cloud. I don't know what that analogy was for. It just popped up in my head. Um, but either way, that kind of goes to show. Now, I was, under my understanding, the reason that this app exists is for testing out software. Um, developers can use it to experiment um, with programs they might be building. Um, yeah, and if you go over to their page, uh, I'm looking at it again. Yeah, it is for mainly testing and quality assurance, testing out, I'm assuming, different versions of stuff. Um, get started with Orca Toolkit and stuff like that. So yeah, if you have a Mac, honestly, it's really neat. Um, it's really modern. It works great. I'm not sponsored by Mac Stadium in any way. I just kind of saw this on Twitter from one of their administrators. Um, and it's really neat. Like, I actually kind of like it. Um, and virtualizing M1 stuff right now isn't the best. Like, I have this program pop back over to the desktop now on my actual Mac. Um, I have a program called... UTM, um, which is how you can virtualize stuff with Mac uh, M1 because it has the ability to emulate different CPU architectures. Um, and I have used it, it's just really slow. Like running a really simple Ubuntu server instance, it's slower than my 2005 um, server that I have in the other room that hosts like five websites at the same time. And this is on an emulated M1 running an emulation of x86 so that kind of just goes to show that it isn't the best it's very power intensive too like it's super slow in the emulation but it's also like really really power intensive like my, my mac mini i have a little menu bar item that lets me see um what the heat inside of my machine is defaults like 33 degrees celsius when i boot this thing up it goes straight up to 70 degrees celsius which for an m1 equipped uh, mac is really high and anything, any resources that aren't being used by other apps in my Mac Mini, that thing just takes them all at the same time, and I had zero percent idling, which is kind of strange. But again, it's a it's a beta app as far as I know. And UTM runs um, some virtual Ethan find it when you're editing this. Um, it runs that uh, virtualizing program that you can access from the terminal, and apparently doing it that way is a lot faster than using this front facing app of UTM. But either way, um, there's all those options out there. I'll leave both um, Orca Toolkit in the description and UTM if you want to try that out. Um, basically, I just kind of wanted to showcase some M1 virtualization. I can go more in depth in another video if you guys want that. Um, but until then, I hope you guys enjoyed. Be sure to subscribe if you like the video, and see you all next time. Bye-bye.